Hi everyone, Elizabeth Hefner here, Sapphire Ambassador. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it so much. I had, sorry it took me so long to get this out to you. I actually recorded this as a video last week and then forgot a couple chunks of things that I wanted to say and I'm like, I need to redo it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it as a call so that everyone hears it live and you don't have to watch a recording because then you can spend your time watching other recordings of things that you want to work on, which is something that also is super important in what I'm going to be talking about, right? Um, let me write that down. Okay, so what I really felt like at convention was that I needed to have, I needed to regroup my IPA plan. And some of you know that my schedule, my kid's schedule, my work schedule outside of the home all got thrown off last fall. And I started working Monday through Friday outside of the home, um, which I hadn't done ever since having children. I was pregnant with my oldest when I took a job that was not Monday through Friday. It was on the weekends. I raised all of my kids up to their ages that they are, right? Working weekends. And so to go back to work Monday through Friday, which I didn't like in the first place when I did that out of school, out of grad school, I'm like, this is for the birds. We work five days and have two days off. And so when Plexus came a, became a vision for me, I'm like, this is great. Like, why wouldn't we want to be able to work when we want? Why wouldn't we want to help people in an honorable honorable way and work for a company that really has um, our best foot forward, especially with the changes that we've seen and they have come to us. They came to us on the jewel call last week and they're like, we are really passionate about a network marketing, about doing it the right way, about and doing it that a way that's not usually done, right? It's never, Plexus is the only comp plan that's a starburst comp plan, okay? That means that you can have 600 level one joins and five of them could also have joins and or 500 of them could have joins. Like there's no requirement. There's no like balancing legs or things like that. Now there are safeguards in our business in terms of having outside leg requirements, which is really good because we don't want to sign somebody up and then they push us right to the top and we're just sitting there doing nothing. Like that's not good. We don't want that. And so there are safeguards in terms of outside leg requirements as you continue to go up the ranks, things like that, that safeguard our business. But the whole point is that it's a starburst. No one else has that. Um, Plexus is debt free. Plexus has a great rating with the Better Business Bureau, right? And so those are also things that you want to be talking about in your stories and on your wall and going live about, even if it's just little snippets. Share those things that you're excited about that you see that Plexus is doing and doing well. The recognition, the convention, how they roll out the red carpet for everyone, right? How we can earn these incredible trips. Like <laughs> these trips are just, I don't know. I know all these other companies are like, our company does the best trips. I just, I just, I disagree. And not all that respectively. I'm like, no, I disagree. Plexus has the best, like they're just hands down. Um, and so just all of these things, I just felt like we really needed to regroup, rediscover where we're at, make sure that we know what we're doing with our lives. And I posted on my Facebook wall the other day, just like, these are my personal goals. Like these are my things, not all Plexus. And it doesn't mean that those are the only goals that I have in a day or in a week. It means that those are things that I felt I needed to tweak a little bit and push myself a little bit more. So I'm, you know, if I'm already doing X, Y, and Z, it's not like I quit doing that to do these other things, right? It's adding on. It's kind of like when you're trying to eat healthier. I don't recommend just not eating any carbs. I recommend adding more protein and vegetables and fruit. You don't just go, I'm never eating carbs again. Like that's setting yourself up to fail. It's adding one more thing. It's adding that extra workout a week. It's pushing yourself that little bit. So um, I'm really great, glad, grateful that Sabrina just went over all of the social media training. My biggest tips from Amber Miller's social media training, I just want them on one recording, right? Um, so please make sure you're sending that record recording that she just did for people that are wanting to revamp and fine tune their social media. But I really liked 
that she said not to, well, I interpreted it differently. I've been doing the auto caption and writing a snippet of what I'm talking about because I want them to see the snippet. And then if they want to just read and not have to turn on the volume at all, because the little snippet doesn't really say everything that I'm saying, but it that's the attention grabber. And then the auto captions is going to tell people everything that I'm saying and keep them there because I never turn I never turn my volume on ever. Like if you don't give me a caption to read, I'm not going to listen to you talk. I don't know why, because I'm not opposed to like listening to people talk. I'm just like, to, do I want to listen to this or not? If I'm reading, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I'll keep reading. But if I'm like, nope, this doesn't pertain to me, I'm I'm done. Okay. So I do both. I put a little like description, attention grabber, like Sabrina was talking about. And then I do the auto caption so people can hear what I'm saying without having to turn their volume on. Um, also, um, sharing like dumb little tips. So I really took that to heart with stuff also that um, Balan's been talking about on different coaching calls and stuff. Like I bought ground beef and it needed to be frozen. It wasn't, it was like, you know, discounting down. And so I put it in a big, big Ziploc bag and I squish it down really good. And I'm like, and I talked about it on my stories. Like if you squish this down, it lays flat in your freezer. It thaws out quicker. It doesn't take up as much room. It's not this weird block that's taking up weird space in your freezer. And I had people commenting like, oh my gosh, this is such a good idea. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, great. Like, so these little things that I don't think are that big of a deal apparently are helping people, right? So even those little tips that make your day easier, share them. Um, Jenny posted her shampoo. How many comments did you get on your shampoo? I'm like, where did you buy this? Thanks for saying what it is, but where did you buy it? And that was great because if I'm not a Plexus person, now she can have this whole conversation with a new person, right? Um, and then working on your social media, working on those reels, working on having that content development, because as your following grows, then you're going to have that content there right? That was a really big takeaway from Amber Miller too. Like we don't have, if we don't have this huge following, but we're working on our social media, then it's great. And that made me feel really good too. I'm like, well, my reels only get, you know, a couple hundred views. Sometimes they go up a little bit up to a thousand or so. Most of them are sitting at like 300, which is great because when I look at insights, it's all like not friends, not followers on Instagram. So that's good that it's getting my name out there. And so it's going to be like Sue and one of these reels is going to go viral and I'm going to have this huge influx of following, right? Which again, is not the whole point. The whole point is to have content that's attractive and, and adding value and showing people what we have to offer. If you're Facebook, so we, we also want to do a, oh gosh, when my video, I couldn't remember the word either evaluation of your of your Facebook, like go to your Facebook, look at what things you're posting are getting comments, look at how much engagement you're getting, look at what it looks like. Does it look like the Plexus channel? Does it look like um, it's just all inspiration channel? Does it look, you know, what is your, what does your Facebook look like? Cause you want it to be well-rounded. Sabrina just went over the plan, right? This is the, the things that you should be talking about. This is your what you are, who you are, your top five things. So making sure that that's getting rounded out and don't be afraid to help your people that you're helping too. Like, hey, let's look at your social media. Okay, you don't post a lot. You share a lot of recipes. Totally awesome. That's great. What we can do as you're going to start posting about Plexus too is you can boost your engagement. So what I've been doing is boosting my engagement on my Facebook. Ever since I got hacked like last summer, my engagement has not been the same. And so I started asking questions. My fruit fly question got a ton of comments and it wasn't it wasn't BS. Like I really had a fruit fly problem. <laughs> we I have really got it under control, but it really was a problem. Um asking about I'm going to ask one like my kids have bags of school supplies that came home like their little zipper bags of like, like, it's kind of a perfectly good pencil, right? But this is all torn up. What do I do with these bags of school supplies, you know, that they're going to want new ones going into school, right? So do I just throw this out? That feels wasteful. Like, that's one of the things I'm going to ask about. What does everybody do with that stuff? And I have four kids. We don't need bins and bins and bins of broken crayons. So 
let's get creative, right? Um, asking about, would you prefer a mountain vacation or a beach vacation? Stuff like that. If you ask something that's too deep, this is something Amber Miller also talked about, it doesn't get the engagement. People are quick. Sabrina talked about this, short attention span. So what can people answer quickly? What can they, you know, say fast? They don't want to have to think in that platform. Um, and so they're just scrolling. They're just wanting to engage. It's just fun. It's relaxing. So think about those kind of things. Christina Williams does a lot of that, like polls, like asks an opinion. Brittany Howard does. Um, I've been integrating that more again. I never have gone to like Google, like what are good Facebook engagement ideas, but you could. And then don't forget that this book that we did, that's the other thing. I didn't want to just throw it out the window is that she has a social media plan. Day one, two, three, all the way to like day, what was it? 21 or 14. And then you can start over again, right? You can follow the social media plan day 15. So you can, you have 15 days. It's over two weeks of a plan for your social media. And then you go back and you do it again and you do it again, right? And so don't forget that we have a plan right now in this book for our social media too. And I also think just having like setting that standard for yourself, like some people like Sue or like make two reels a day, get two reels a day out there. Well, that was really not my cup of tea. It's not that I can't develop the discipline to do that, but I really like to make sure my reels look good and they take me a little bit of time to make sometimes that sometimes I can whip them out real quick. It just depends. Right. And so I have set a goal for myself to make three to five reels a week. And then once I get going with consistently making three to five, then I can go, okay, now I need to make four to five a week and then five a week and then increase that. That's my personal plan. If you want to jump two feet in and you want to just do two reels a day, go for it. But that's my personal plan. That was my standard. That's what I need to hold myself accountable to, which I know I failed. I did not do three last week. Um, then working an IPA sheet. This is another thing. This is part of my plan, getting out an IPA sheet. This one, I don't have in team impact. I'll have to put it in there. This came from the ambition Co coalition, which we put, a um, I put a, how to develop goals and get into action mode post. And she had two of the podcasts linked in there. There's two of the ambition coalition podcasts linked. And this is something that they talked about was their IPA sheet. And what stood out to me about this one is that at the bottom, I mean, it has a schedule. It has your big three. So the big three is big to me. You guys probably can't see this. My light's not working here either. So what are your top three priorities in your business and in your personal life? I like to think of those every day. Um, a schedule. So sometimes it's nice to jot down your schedule each day, especially if it's different. I know some sometimes we have like the same schedule every day. And so we don't necessarily need to write it down every day. But when you're someone like me, who's like has different kid things and different work schedules and different events and volunteering and whatever, I find that I can jot my schedule down and that way I can fill out when my office hours are because they're different every single day sometimes. And then um a reflect. So everything else is standard to our winning day sheet, reaching out, new conversations, potentials, inactives, active people, business conversations, personal development, showing up on social media, um, tracking your goal, all of that. That's pretty standard. But in the corner here, it says reflect. Something that went well today was something I could have made better today if I, and if I was coaching out my, if I was coaching my output today, I would tell myself. So that those three little questions for me were huge because I've often done this. And this is what cued me back to this is one, I can reflect on really positive things for the day, which we've worked on in this team. And that's awesome. Um, two, I can go, all right, when this situation comes up again, because likely it will, what can I do differently? And then three, instead of spiraling and beating myself up and shooting myself, that was what they talked about on the, on that podcast, the ambition coalition that's posted, that's posted on our team page. Instead of shooting myself, it's more, what would I tell myself? 
what would I tell, what would I tell one of you? If one of you came to me and said, this is what happened today, I would have an answer and I would be confident and I'd be like, this is what we need to do. Don't worry about it. And we're going to work through it. And here's our plan. And you know, whatever, ask the questions, figure it out. When it come, came to myself, I was just beating myself up about things that went wrong or I didn't like the outcome of or whatever. And so taking that step back has just been huge for me to say, this is what I would tell somebody else in this situation. So why am I freaking out on myself, right? So I'm also an overachiever. So there's that too. So that self-excuse in there were really good. Um, and then I want to remind you too, so the winning day, whatever IP sheet you're using, it doesn't matter as long as you're using it. I think that there are some really important components of our IPA sheets that we don't want to lose track of. And that is having, so I wrote my notes here, lists. Um, so different lists that you need to keep track of are the new people you're finding on Facebook, who your workers are so you don't lose track of them, make sure you're tagging them, make sure you're helping your people, a list of your active customers, an act, a list of your inactive customers. So we used to call them white liners because in the when you see all of your names listed in your virtual office, people that weren't ordering were white and people that were ordering were green. So if you hear me say white liner, that's why. So then that's an inactive person. So keeping track um, and then our potentials. And that's two, that's our business potentials and our product potentials. Why I think that having a bigger list of all of these categories can be handy is so that when we have an event coming up, so um, with Restore coming out, we should be telling every single person, whether they're ordering or not, hey, have you heard of Restore? Did you see your emails? This could be really great for you. Or hey, maybe you didn't get the results that you um, wanted when you did Plexus for a month or two earlier, which also isn't enough time, but I really think Restore could be helpful for you. You really want to still keep in contact with those people and also not just about Plexus. Like I try to send like some sort of in contact message so that they're not feeling like they're just a customer to me. Um, but I do want, because they are my friends and I do know that this could be a great option for them, I want to let them know about Restore. I want to let them know about Iron Woman. I want to let them know about an event we're having, right? And so met, having those lists handy and ready to go means you can put a quick message into boards and go boom, 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 and get it sent and not be stressing out over oh my gosh, I have to send this message. Who do I need to send it to? Okay, let me sit down. And you're sending and then you're like, oh, wait, I forgot about someone. Just have lists ready. Have your list in your planner ready to roll. Um, okay. And then I think it's really important to have your office hours, like I mentioned in the schedule, and really sticking to them. So like Friday, I had more time Friday. So Friday I had I spent a lot of time with some going through my back office, with sending out messages, with writing down my Facebook friends that I've made over the last several months so that I can start cold messaging them. And the message that's come up with several times on different calls, but that Sally uses and gets really, really good conversations going, as well as Trisha Regard is who she got it from. And I'll have to put this in a chat somewhere, but she says, hey, you know, and uses the name. Hi, Susie, how are you? I know I haven't had much of a chance to connect on here, so I'll keep this brief. I want to be mindful of your time. Anyway, I've been using these natural plant-based products. It's my pleasure to introduce other women to health options. Have no clue if this is something you might be interested in, but I'd love to send you some info. Are you open to checking out some options? And I sent it out Friday and I had like three people. Yep, I want information. I'm always looking for healthy things. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> At the end of my office hours, I did that. So I'm like, okay, office hours are not done because they just responded. Um, so just let acknowledging too, I think sometimes with that cold message, we think, oh, we have to develop a relationship. And But then what? Like you randomly are becoming friends with Facebook friends to just be randomly friendly with them or because we know that we have something that's amazing and we want to get that out to as many people as we can, right? And so calling that out and saying, gosh, we haven't had a lot of chance to connect on here. 
And I really value your time. I'm going to keep this brief, like really just calling those things out and breaking the ice that way, instead of just being a creeper on their Facebook is really a great way to go about it. Okay. So Sally's getting really good results. I'm getting responses with that. So that's awesome. Um, and you can filter when you're, I can't, I haven't done it from my phone, but you can go to your computer and pull up your Facebook friends and find your new friends. And like, it's kind of in that activity log. It's a column under the activity log and it'll pull up like who you've made friends with and you can go back pretty far. Um, and that way you're not missing out on who those new friends are. Cause I don't know about you, but I'll be like, oh, we have mutual friends. She's, she doesn't look crazy. And I think I could have stuff in common with her friend request. Right. Um, and that way I just go and look into my activity log and see who actually accepted that. Um, the other thing, since we're talking about Facebook's IPA stuff, that's fun. Is I go, I've been in the beginning of each week writing a huge list of all of the people that I want to talk to. I don't want to like totally show you all my names because that would be against um, privacy standards over here. And then we had like, Jackie had the call that she did a couple weeks ago. So I had written down all of the people that I wanted to make sure I messaged them because I tagged a bunch of people in that, but I wanted to message them as well. And then I have a list here of somewhere of who I want to offer a, an event to, to help them go silver. And then um, I also just make other notes. Like as I'm working, Oh gosh, there's a count. One of these as I was working. So I had my original list, but as I was working and as I was messaging people and as people were messaging me and as I was seeing things on Facebook, other people were coming to mind. So this list that I write out in the beginning of the week is not all inclusive. It's not like those are the only people I'm going to talk to. Obviously, if someone comes up, if someone reaches out to me, if someone's on my heart, um, I'm going to make sure I'm in contact with them as well. Okay. So that I like. And I also think that sometimes it's okay to stay in one column of your IPA sheet for a while, as long as the next day you're going moving on to a, a different column. So we say like, okay, just reach out to five new potentials, reach out to this many of your back office people. Sometimes depending on my mood and when, where my brain's at and how busy my brain is, I'll just stay like, okay, I'm going to talk to all of my people in my back office, active and inactive. I'm going to get those messages out today. I'm still going to send new messages to potentials and follow up with anyone I'm talking to already, things like that. I'm still going to do that effort, but I might just power through everyone in my back office one day a week. Okay. Um, I might, take, I will, I definitely will. When I write down all those new friends I've made on Facebook, I definitely will just send, 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 send from boards. I'll put a message in boards, send, send, send the one I read to you and just get it out to as many as I can. I'll set a timer for 30 minutes. Right. Um, and that way my brain isn't moving, 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 moving to all these different categories. I can stay in one and power through it and stay a little more focused with my time. So it might just be me. It might be something that works for you. There's really no wrong way to work this business. The wrong way to work your business is to not work your business and not to talk to people and have meaningful conversations. Um, I think it's really important to just get your meal plan ready for the week the best that you can. I mean, I know stuff comes up and kid stuff or it's summer. So in impromptu stuff, we went and met friends on Saturday and didn't leave the park until 930 at night. That was not what I intended. <laughs> I was, but we weren't, we were having so much fun. It was like, well, there's no reason why we can't stay. Um, so dinner became like this impromptu. What are we going to do? Go home and cook eggs. Like what's going on? So I understand things come up, but get your meal plan done. Get that thinking done the beginning of the week. Write it down in your planner. You have your list of people you want to talk to all week. Write down your meals for the week. Get your grocery order in. Run to Aldi's. Aldi's can be super efficient because everything's in the same place every single week. And on every single store, um, we can save time when we do things like that. I think that employing, employing discipline. So like 
purposely doing things that we do not want to do in our life is what we is really, really important because there's going to be something in your business that you don't want to do. I don't know what it is. It's probably different for everyone. Um, but you need to force yourself to do things in your personal life that you don't want to do. And I'm not talking like, oh, I really don't want to have to like clean the dishes. Like we just, you just pick it up and you do it anyway. I feel like we don't even think about, I don't want to do this. We just do it. There is no, I want to, or I don't want to, you just do it. It's just automatic. Right. But challenging yourself in some way and doing something you don't want to do. I don't want to take a cold shower. I do not want to take a cold plunge. So what have I been doing? Instead of turning the water up, I've been turning it down. Instead of starting with a hotter shower, I'm starting with a warm shower. Um, I don't like it, but I'm <laughs> I'm purposely doing something I don't want to do. Um devotionals and just what that looks like for you, but really getting in the word of God. If that, if you're a Christian, really praying over yourself and your team and your mindset and protecting us from that mindset, because it says in the Bible over and over, like renew your mind and depend on the Lord. He is our strength. We're worthy because of him, not because of anything that we do. And reminding ourselves of those truths is going to help us to be so much stronger marching forward in all areas of our life. Um, and okay, just, I, I'm looking at all my notes cause I don't want to miss anything here. So what we have been doing, good job team, is we've been planning events. We've had mixology events and we had an online event on, on the restore. And I'm going to repeat that. And I want to have us invite everyone in our back office, whether they're ordering or not say, Hey, we have this new restore. This could be really great for you. So wait for that to come up. That'll be coming up. But online events, in-person events, we've got more scheduled. Keep going with those. And, you know, I know Jen Viev has said this before, like sometimes we feel like we don't want to do an event for two people. Well, maybe we need to do an event for two people. And as we continue to do this and show that we are being successful with this, we're going to have more people coming into attendance. And the other thing is just hard. People are busy. It is summertime. There's a lot going on all the time. And so it takes time to get everybody's schedules to align and that's okay because whoever does show up, it's, we're doing our devotionals, we're putting in the work. And so whoever needs to have these products and this opportunity, they're going to be there for us, but we have to show up too. Um, and then the, uh, the last thing, I mean, I have lots and lots of scattered notes, but the last thing I really wanted to touch on is that. Plexus, and I talked about this at the beginning of the month with the happenings for the month, but we have to recruit to retain. And I know that sometimes we feel like, oh, I really need to work on my retention, but you can't retain if you don't recruit and you can't du duplicate if you don't recruit and you can't lead if you don't recruit. So sh we should never not be getting our joins every single month. And yes, I understand there's some months that are like, okay, that was tougher. Or, you know, I had all these people on the fence and no one actually got started and that's okay. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about, but our goal should be really to recruit. And there's lots and lots of reasons why when we get our recruits and people see them, Elizabeth is welcoming someone in the team page. That's really encouraging to you. That's really encouraging to the people that have also got gotten started with me, right? That's really encouraging to the people. I'm like, Hey, put a post up, blah, blah, blah. And then they see, I'm inviting another new person to the team page. They're going to be like, Oh, maybe I should do this too. Like she's been doing this a while and she still has new people joining her. Right? Like for all of these reasons, um, if we think, okay, I just need to go back and help these people get restarted, that may or may not happen. You know, we have our customer care, we, we have retention, some people have better retention than others, but you can't just expect people that have not ordered in a while or have ordered inconsistently to all of a sudden be retained. Okay. If their subs are off, if they're not ordering consistently, if they're not communicating well, can you get them back on board? Yeah. Will you always? I don't know. And so don't put your eggs in that basket. If you want to earn the cruise, if you want to earn the monthly incentives, you have to recruit to retain. This month, Plexus allowed us to get four joins and help one go silver to get the prize. 
that may or may not be moving forward. Try not to tell you too much, but read between the lines. You have to recruit to retain, okay? So, and getting, you know, if if you're like, I need to work on retention, I might say you might need to work on recruiting first. And alongside of re your recruiting, once you get that recruit, you're going to work on retaining them really well, right? New foot forward, start over. These new people, I'm going to re retain them very well. And then you can also go back to people that have fallen off and say, hey, I, I know that maybe I didn't wasn't as supportive as I could have been and I've learned a lot. And so I, I'd like to revisit your health goals and these new products that Plexus have. Are you open to a discussion? Can we hop on the phone, right? Like that's a good way to say it and blame it on yourself. Hey, maybe I didn't offer enough support or enough assistance to you and I really think this could help you. Um, Okay, just going over one last skim of my notes so I don't miss anything. Um, I was reading a, a a book, a novel. It's not even a novel. I don't know. It's just a fiction, mystery, clean book. And in it, he said, it's a cop. He said, you couldn't get a yes if you weren't willing to risk hearing a no. And I want us to keep that in the forefront of our mind. Our kids are not afraid to ask for anything. Can I have ice cream? Can I have chocolate? Can I go swim? Can I do this? Can I watch TV? Can I, they ask all day long, all of mine still, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I have this? I don't want to. I mean, they are not afraid to tell me what they want and what they don't want. And yet we are afraid to go say, hey, do you want some chocolate to our friends? I mean, if you had a chocolate bar in your hand and you knew your friend loved chocolate, you would not hesitate to ask them, do you want some of this chocolate with me? So why are we afraid to say, hey, I feel so much better and I think this could really help you. Can I share some information with you? Why are you afraid of no? And if they say no, too bad. They're still your friend. You're still going to say, hey, I have chocolate still. Do you want some of this with me? I'd love to share my chocolate bar with you. Like you're why are we so afraid of it? Just stop. Just stop. You have to risk hearing the no. Our kids are not afraid of us telling them, no, you can't have that. You can't go there. You can't wear that out in public. I mean, they're not afraid. But yet at some point we just stop dreaming. We stop realizing we can do hard things. I don't know. That's an examination for yourself to think about and pray about and all of that. Okay. Okay. So those are my big things, I think, just really, really setting a standard for yourself and setting those office hours. I really like Rebecca folks was talking on that podcast, like I did my office hours and now I have all this time free for the rest of the day. And the other girl, the contrast was, I look how much stuff I got done in my office hours and I'm both. I'm like, look how much stuff I got done. And then because I've done stuff, I'm like, I want to do more. And I want to do more because I'm excited and I'm getting people talking to me. I've had people come to me about Plexus again. And I think it's because there's newfound excitement, because my engagement is better, because I listen to the tips on social media engagement. I think people are just ready. People are still wanting to feel better, right? That hasn't gone away. So go forth. Let's go. Um, I will type out that message and put it in the makers chat so that you have that. And if you have any other questions that come up, feel free to reach out to your sponsor and get them back to me and we'll get through those too. And thanks for getting on guys.